The Lillian McDermott Show. We love you free. Now it's time to dance. Bridges we burn. It's a necessary we thing make that we make Then we live and learn. When life gets tough. And it seems like your best ain't good enough. If you're in need of hope, you know where I'll be. I'll be right here. Right here, and when you need a friend, you can count on me. I'll be right here, right here, waiting for you. This is the place you can always turn to when you need a friend. The Lillian McDermott Show. To reach out to Lillian, visit her on the web at whenyouneedafriend.com. Now, let's all learn together. Here's Lillian McDermott. Hello, my listening friend. It's so nice we can meet each other on the air on this beautiful best day ever. And for those of you who are new to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, the purpose of the show is to provide a safe place where you can go to when you need a friend. It is my commitment to provide alternative ways to heal, and it is my mission to make awareness, responsibility, and truth a part of our everyday life. And I hope you, my listening friend, will feel empowered to learn a new truth and live the life of your dreams. Now, I'm going to say it again. You may want to speed dial me, put this on your phones, because when the time comes, the third caller or texter will win a free book today. So listen in. So that's 407-373-5959. That's 407-373-5959. Now, a while ago, I read a poll, and I can't remember from where, that it stated that the number one fear was public speaking. The third one, the third number one fear was death. So this means that we would much rather die than give a speech. Comfortable can keep us from achieving our dreams. Now, on a more disturbing observation, There are people who get beaten every day. And there are people who drink themselves till they pass out. Although it might seem odd, but that is familiar to them. And it becomes comfortable. And this familiar scenario, comfortable, can kill you. Now, Are you ready? Are you ready to learn a new truth about comfortable and being in your comfort zone? Well, then you're in for a treat because the author of Reach, I'm holding for those of you who are going to be watching this later on YouTube, holding the book called Reach by Dr. Andy Malinsky. Now, Dr. Andy Malinsky is a PhD and he's going to tell you all about his background but he's going to teach us how to reach outside of our comfort zone. And since it is our sole purpose in life to give and receive love and knowledge, I am grateful that Dr. Andy Malinsky is here to do just that. Welcome, Dr. Malinsky, to the Lone Dermot Radio Show. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Well, I am very thrilled because this has been something that, this is a topic that's been requested. And so because it's been requested, and as always on the Lone McDermott Radio Show, we reach out to the best. So we reached out to the guy who wrote the book, Reach. Isn't that amazing? (laughs) I'm I'm honored. Thank you. (laughs) Yes. So share a little bit about your background and what led you to write this book. Sure. So um, I'm a professor uh, of uh, in, in the business school and also a psychology department. And I think the main reason I wrote this book is because I struggle stepping outside my yes, comfort zone. I hear you. You know, I, I, I always have. Um, I, I struggled, uh, struggled with public speaking, as you talked about. I think I probably would have preferred dying than speaking <laughs> in public early on. Um, I struggled networking, making small talk with people I don't know, being assertive, speaking up in meetings, all of these things. And, and I noticed that other people did too. So I started doing research about it. I started trying to understand what the challenges were. Um, and, and I got inspired to write a book. I also um, should say that my 
first book, before this book, yeah. was about acting outside your cultural comfort zone, mm. like switching cultures, moving to another culture, interacting across cultures. And I got feedback from that book. People were saying, this is really cool. This is really helpful. But the topic's even broader. It's not just about acting across you know, national cultures. In our everyday lives, we encounter situations outside our comfort zones, even within our own culture. So I think that message from readers in my previous book, combined with my own sort of introspection, yeah. that really inspired me to write the book. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And, you know, there is, uh, yesterday I talked about this. We, we did, um, we always talk about how to change our lifestyle and, you know, people want to get healthy, but a lot of them want just to take a pill instead of taking responsibility and changing that, the, the lifestyle. And so the song that keeps coming to my head yesterday and today is the meatloaf song. Remember that song? I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. So there's that, you know, I want to live the life of my dreams, but I won't do that. So that is what I'd like to talk about today. The things that we don't want to do that keep us from the life we want. Does that sound fair? Absolutely. That's yeah. It. That's what the book's about. And that is the book, my listening friends, that you will have an opportunity to win, be the third caller or texter today on the Lola McDermott Radio Show and win your free copy of the book, Reach. That's 407-373-5959, 407-373-5959. As we continue our conversation with Dr. Andrew, Andy Malinsky, worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. Okay, so we're going to continue this conversation. Seriously, Andy, um, do you want me to pause it or we're good? Okay. I'm good. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So seriously, this is something that happened yesterday. I had a guy come up to me at the gym. Now, I have four herniated discs right now and... Um, and a spinal compression from an accident. I was rear-ended back in June. Oh, no. And so I hadn't been in the gym for a while. And, um, and I will tell you, I have not taken one Tylenol, one pain pill, and the doctors are amazed that I'm not in excruciating pain. I do feel c uncomfortable, but it's tolerable right now. And so this guy comes up to me, and he, every time he comes to me, he talks to me about his pain in his body, his aches, and all of that. I know from doing the show and from being a certified life coach and all the other studies and research I've done that it's beyond what he says it is, right? So I finally just said, do you eat meat? And he said very proudly, yes, I do. And I said, would you be willing to give it up? And he goes, oh, no. He went like that. And I said, well, what are you willing to do to be healthy? And he goes, I want to do anything. I, I want to, you know, I come here to the gym. I'm working out every day, blah, blah, blah. And I said, would you be willing to give up meat? And he goes, I don't think I can do that. And the song just came to my head from Meatloaf. Do you remember that song? Yeah. <laughs> but do you, do you find people say that to you all the time? I, I can't do that. Yeah, I think so. I, I, well, I, I think meat's a good example. I mean, meat's an example where it's something that maybe he just likes. But I think a lot of people say, I can't do that because they're afraid of it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That, mm -hmm. that, that as opposed to like um, missing out on some great pleasure, like, you know, barbecue or whatever it is. But I think in a, lot, a lot of times with stepping outside your comfort zone, it has to do with fear really, you know? Fear. Okay. So, so let's talk about that fear when we come back on the air. I normally don't have conversations like this off the air, but since we started recording our conversations, because I always say, man, I wish I had the record button on when we're like off the air, because some of the greatest conversations happen while we're off the air. And I always say, remember that, remember that, because we need <laughs> to have it on the air. Right. And, uh, but now people can tune in and listen to these conversations, but there's still, we need to focus on that. <clears throat> so one of the things that I would like to talk about are the prices and the payoffs. Uh, and I will acknowledge to you that I am a shy extrovert. Have you ever met someone that calls himself a shy extrovert? Definitely. Yes. Are you? Are you? 
Uh, no, I'm, I wouldn't call myself a shy extrovert, but I think I'm somewhere in between extroversion and introversion. I used to think I was more extroverted than I am. Here we go. Time to dance. You can count on me. I'll be right here waiting for you. You can text Lillian McDermott or leave her a voicemail at 407-373-5959. Once again, here's Lillian. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn from one another. And today's teacher is Dr. Andy Molinsky. And Andy has been passionate about personal growth, obviously, as you l learn about psychology and you learn about some of the things that you personally want to grow with which is what my show is about. I wanted to grow, and if I wanted my listening friends to grow, I started working on myself personally. And so do as I say, not as I do, does not work here. So uh, Andy, thank you so much for being part of the show and sharing what you've learned about getting outside of our comfort zone. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really happy to, to be here and speak about it. Great. So now for those of you who are just tuning in, if you call 407-373-5959 or text, so 407, leave a message, 407-373-5959, call, leave a message or text, and you will get a copy of this book, Reach. So Andy, as we were talking off the air, we talked about, I shared with you what I shared yesterday on the show about the guy that won't do that. He won't give up meat in order for his inflammation in his body to go away. He won't do that. So do a lot of people come to you and say, I would love to be a speaker or I'd love to be a doctor, a ballerina or whatever it is, but I won't do X, fill in the blank. Absolutely. I think that, you know, whether it's, whether it's public speaking or whether it's uh, saying no to someone or, or networking or pitching or promoting yourself, people say that all the time. They say, well, they, they might say, I won't do it. They might say, you know, it's just not the right time or whatever, whatever the excuse might be. And what I've found is that they're really legitimate reasons. You know, sometimes people, um, actually in my work, I found there are five kind of core challenges mm -hmm. or, or, or sources of the fear that people experience. One is, is the idea of authenticity, the idea that this isn't me. I'm afraid that this won't be me. I don't think the meat example is a great one, but maybe public speaking or, or being more assertive than I'm used yeah. to. Like that, that this just won't feel like me and that's scary. Mm -hmm. Another one is confidence, the, the idea that I won't be good at this and yeah. people kind of notice that. A third one's likability, the idea that... Um, People won't like this new version of me. Let's say if I'm more assertive than I, than I usually am, people will hate me even, that, that mm. fear. Uh, there's resentment sometimes. Sometimes people feel resentful. They have to act outside their comfort zone in the first place. And then the final one is morality. I didn't find this all the time. I found this in, in some cases, but the idea that acting outside my comfort zone feels wrong. I actually, I opened Ooh. the book Reach. The, the story at the very beginning of Reach yes. is, is a story of a, a, a woman who had to fire her best friend Oh, I love that story. Share a little bit about that story, Andy. Yeah, she 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 um she uh, started a company, a small company. You know, borrowed some money from family and friends, and the company was going well. She even hired, uh, started to hire a workforce. Uh, and, and one of the early employees was her best friend, and it turned out her best friend was just really bringing the business down. And she, and she realized she came to a point where she was trying to raise more funding, and she was going to have to let her friend go because she was bringing down the company. But this mm -hmm. was her best friend, yeah, and she just felt you know, awful about it. And I think a lot of times people have a very difficult time delivering bad news in general, right? In, in life, um, you know, with our, with our loved ones, with, 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 with people we might be dating, with our kids, and then of course at work as well. It's really hard to deliver bad news, especially to a friend. And, and in her case, she, she worried that the friend would hate her. She worried she didn't sure. even know how to do it right in a way that would be sort of delivering the message, but also dignifying. And then she also kind of felt it was wrong. And, you know, I think the thing is, is that when you're um, stepping outside your comfort zone, there are a lot of these fears that we're talking talking about. And these fears can hold you back, sort of like your meat story. It, you know, in a way, it's like you talk about the excuses. Oh, no, I won't do that or I can't do that. But if you peel back the onion one level, mm -hmm. it's these fears that are really holding you back. 
Okay, so let's talk about the fear. And you go through in your book, you talk about a vicious cycle of avoidance. Let's talk about that vicious cycle of avoidance that we all know. I don't think we need to even go into too much detail about this because we know we do it. So go ahead. Yeah, well, we avoid because it brings us relief, right? Who wouldn't feel relieved if we avoid the thing we're afraid of, whether it's a snake or whether it's, uh, I don't know, public speaking or saying no or whatever it might be, or, you know, you know, networking or whatever it might be, you know, um, we, 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 we don't do it, we avoid it. And that, that does, that brings short term relief. But the problem is, is that the next time that you attempt to go to, go to try to to do it, it's not like it's going to be any easier, right? It's going to be actually harder. So it becomes a vicious cycle. It's sort of the idea if you're afraid of a snake, you avoid the snake and, oh, phew, I got to avoid the snake. But then the next time you encounter the snake, it's probably going to be that much harder. And so that's the vicious cycle of avoidance, that avoidance has this little short-term benefit. And that's why we do it, you know, that you get to avoid the relief. But over time, it's really a dysfunctional strategy. Okay. Perfect. That's a, a really, you know, fear. I, I, I write for Florida Today and um, I, I wanted to, I do a lot of um, mnemonics. Um, so a lot of people call it acronyms. Um, so I came up with a, an acronym for fear, which is follow every avenue required. Follow every avenue required to achieve what you desire. And so let's, let's look at the prices and the benefits because I had shared with you off the air that I am very shy. A lot of people don't know this about me, but I hated Andy. I hated being shy. I felt like I was missing out on life. So I decided that I was going to step out my comfort zone. And I, you know what? Since then I have not gone back. Now, deep down inside, I am still shy. That little girl that you couldn't look at when I was little, you'd look at me and I'd start to cry. So that's how shy I was. So let's talk about the prices and the benefits that might start getting people wanting to step out of of the comfort zone. That's a great story. I'm glad you shared that. It's, you know, what I find is that, um, is that the essential thing that people need to realize is that um, what you, what you um, anticipate worrying about, you know, what, what you avoid, but then think of in the future is this thing that you're afraid of is usually less scary in actuality once you actually go and try and do it. Mm-hmm. So the goal of all of my work in terms of the strategies that I teach people to step outside their comfort zone, all that stuff is meant to break the cycle of avoidance that we were talking about before and actually try to create a positive cycle where people can actually try something thing because when they try it just like I think you did when you mm-hmm. when you sort of broke that shyness and said I'm not going to be shy anymore yeah. pe- people start to have some self discoveries and the discoveries might be for example this isn't as bad as I thought it was or I'm a little bit better at this than I thought I was, right? And when you start to experience those things, that encourages you not to avoid, but to approach, to actually try it again. Mm -hmm. But you're only going to get to that point of trying it if you can apply some of these strategies to taking something that you fear and turning it into something that you have the courage to try. Nice, nice. Okay, so let's talk about these strategies because you're really good in the book about pinpointing and telling stories. So let's talk about, let's share another story about someone that was able to step outside their comfort zone and it led to achieving their dream. Sure. So I have a story that I bring throughout the book. It's a story about a um, a person named Annie Harris. And Annie worked for an investment firm, you know, like, like, and her job was actually to try to get very wealthy people to invest their money in the firm. So she would go, she would go on these meetings and meet these people and try to convince them, you know, in a, in an honest way that, that their firm was a good firm to invest money in. Turned out that, Part of her job was to bring a portfolio manager along with her in these meetings. And that portfolio manager was Rick Schmitz. And he was the guy who was in charge of the stocks and bonds. And he knew a lot of the tax issues. And he knew a lot of sort of the technical basics. And so Annie would bring Rick to these meetings. Here's the problem. The problem was Rick was a complete, utter jerk. 
he would he would he would undermine Annie in meetings. Annie might say, for example, that you know what we're going to get this super high net worth client. I'm meeting with him and his family. He's really important for our firm. I really want to try to make a positive impression on him. And listen, Rick, he's really concerned with tax issues in his portfolio. Let's say, and mm -hmm. Rick might say, Oh yeah, 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 no problem, no problem. Yeah, no, no, it's yeah, I got it, I got it. Or he or he might he might sort of just brush off brush it off and say, Oh no problem. They get into the situation, they get into the moment, they're sitting there with a family, with a man and his family, tax issues come up, and Rick Schmitz says, oh, taxes aren't a problem. He completely dismisses the concern, sure. he embarrasses Annie in front of the client, and this would happen time and time again. He would embarrass her, he would make her feel ashamed, he would undermine her, and you can imagine, put yourself in Annie's shoes, she was, she was livid. This guy was completely undermining her. But here's the problem. Annie was, a, was and is, she's a real person, a people pleaser. And she had a very, has still a very difficult time sort of confronting people, being assertive, delivering bad news. Sure. Annie had the hardest time actually confronting Rick. It was really, really hard. Eventually, she was able to do it. And, and she was able to use a lot of the strategies I talk about in the book, actually. Mm -hmm. But it was so hard. So you can imagine, this is a case where she absolutely has the right to confront this guy that's making her life miserable, a total jerk. You know, mm -hmm. I know we're on a PG show here. I'd, if you're hard, <laughs> I'd go a little stronger. But, you know, she was a total jerk. Um, but but she, she was able to do it. She was able to do it. And, you know, that is this, that when you step out, I um, watched a movie and I quote it all the time. And every time I quote, I go, I think the name is We Bought a Zoo. And he says, all you need is 20 seconds of courage mm. to take that next step. So let's talk about that 20 seconds of courage, that conviction that you talk about in the book and going beyond the avoidance. So let's talk about that 20 seconds that it takes for us, that once you take that step, there's no turning back. What can you tell me, a person that's shy, that doesn't want to introduce themselves to anybody or something simple, not having to fire anybody, just getting outside of their comfort zone to live their life? Well, a couple of things. The first is that you need to have conviction. Mm -hmm. Like you need to have a sense of purpose. It has to be worth it to you because every bone in your body is going to say, I am not going to speak with that person. I feel shy or I am not going to confront that jerk. It is terrifying for me to do it. You need to find your source of conviction. That might be a... Um, personal source of conviction. It might be a professional source of conviction for Annie. She wanted to become a manager. In fact, she wanted to become a leader. And she told mm -hmm. herself, this is a hard conversation, but if I want to be leadership material, this is what I need to be able to do. Yeah. For me, actually, I have to tell you um, that, that my source of conviction myself is often quite personal. I have a, I have 11 year old and a, and a 13 year old, and I'm always trying to coax them outside their comfort zones. <laughs> And, and, you know, I tell myself this, you know, what kind of dad do I want to be? I want to be a role model. And so that ends up being a source of conviction for me. And, you know, that is a great, you know, if anything, if you can't do it for yourself, you can do it for the company you work for. You can do it for your children. You can do it for whatever. Does that make sense? You can have a reason. Absolutely. That's, what, that's, that's one of the keys. One of the keys. And whatever that first step is, that 20 second step. Just do it and be who you say you are. And we're going to continue our conversation with Andy Molinsky when we return about stepping outside your comfort zone. Remember to call 407-373-5959. We'll be right here waiting for you. <laughs> Very good. Love this. Love this conversation. So I have people that are listening that requested this that are so shy but they're shy introverts. It's like perhaps maybe self-esteem. So I'd like to address that in the next segment. Sure. That's okay. Absolutely. Um, when we come back from the, the segment, uh, and you know what, I'm going to pause right here and we're going to continue our conversation in a bit. Oh. Perfect. So how long have you been stepping out of your comfort zone, Andy? What was uh, your moment? What was your moment? 
oh, a long time. I mean, I think I sort of feel like like um, in, in every phase, you know, in every phase, because if you think about it, you know, you're, and I see this with my kids too, you're constantly pushed outside your comfort zone in all these phases from elementary school to middle school. That's a big transition from middle school to high school, high school to college, college yeah. to your first job. Yeah. You know, becoming a manager and, you know, trying something entrepreneurial and social media was a huge case of me stepping outside. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Talk about that. That's, that's huge. Cause I could promote other people but yeah. myself. I'm exactly. horrible. Exactly. It's, it's hard. It's, you know, it's, it's uncomfortable. So, you know, I think at every phase uh, I, I have felt, you know, stepping outside my comfort zone, but I've always felt that that I really have felt deep down that it's important for growth and development because I've seen cases when I have been able to take the leap about how something in retrospect that felt so scary just isn't as scary as I thought it was, or I'm more able to do it. And I feel like that's like a tremendous learning. And I've tried to apply that to, you know, so many different situations in my life. Now there are limits, right? You're not going to constantly step outside your comfort zone. We, maybe we could address that like in every situation. I don't, I don't think that's, that's not the message, right? Um, because, you know, I, th I think, I think you want to, you, you want to pick your spots and, and that's what I would tell your shy introverts too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So self-esteem, we're going to self shy extroverts, don't oh, introverts. Yeah. You know, I was, like I said, a shy extrovert, but, oh, ah, here we go. <laughs> You can text Lillian McDermott or leave her a voicemail at 407-373-5959. Once again, here's Lillian. And welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn from one another. And you can hear us worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. I am your host, Lillian McDermott, and it is my goal that we learn from each other. Go through life with childlike wonder. I, you know, I've been just marveling over my grandchildren and how they have no limits none whatsoever. What happens to us when we get that diploma that they say, we know it all? What happens to us when we become like, like all of a sudden victims and, you know, we wait for other people or if something happens to us, our whole life crumbles. What happens to us? And so I want to encourage you to reformat the word responsibility. Instead of blame, shame, fault, or duty, look at the word responsibility as empowerment and freedom. When you take your life back and you say, you know what? I do want to live the life of my dreams. I don't know what I don't know. And I am going to consider learning more. And if you're there or already want to learn more about it, then go to whenyouneedafriend.com. This is where we have this responsibility conversation, 100% responsibility, no matter what happens. When you take your life back, your life will change and life starts outside of our comfort zone. Truly, I, I speak to you from what I know, what I know that I know. And so please go to whenyouneedafriend.com, become a subscriber and wait for that confirmation email. It's a two-step process. And once you confirm, you will get access to my Mind, Body, Spirit, Positive Affirmation audio link and my 90-day challenge to self-love ebook. But that's not all. You can check out all the stuff that's happening on the Lil McDermott Radio Show, especially please figure out what you can do for my sponsors. Because if it weren't for them, this show would not happen. So check out my sponsors. And when you become a subscriber, the show goes right to your phone or tablet. So grow with me at whenyouneedafriend.com. Grow with me on my social media. That means like me at Instagram, Lillian McDermott, Twitter, Lillian MCD, on facebook.com forward slash Lillian's radio show. You can catch me on demand or listen on demand, Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio. And you can now watch this show, the conversations that Andy and I have been having off the air. You can watch them on YouTube later on when the show is, um, re uh, I guess, uploaded. That's the terminology I was looking for. Or you can call, leave a message, as I said, the third caller or texter. Uh, to call 407-373-5959. We'll get their free copy of Reach, which is the book. And by the way, if you want to learn more about 
getting outside your comfort zone, you can go to andymolinsky.com. All the information will be on my Facebook page at Lillian's Radio Show, and you will be able to learn a little bit more. He's got some insider tips that you can, um, gosh, try. Just take that 20 seconds of courage. Andy, I'm so excited that you are on the Lil McDermott Radio Show, and I am looking forward to the next part of our conversation, talking about people that are introvert but they're also shy, that may feel like they don't matter. Their voice doesn't matter. Why bother? What do you say to people like that? Well, it depends what they're interested in doing. You know, so I think that, um, I think that, uh, I think it's important and critical to step outside your comfort zone for growth and development as we've been talking about. But, you know, I also feel that you know, I, 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 my message, I, I don't want my message to be, you know, step outside your comfort zone in every situation all the time. And, you know, that's the key to life. Cause I don't think that's true. I think you do need to pick your spots, especially if it's really scary for you, as you're talking about for the types of people that I think you're, you're mentioning. So, yeah. so I, I, I would pick, I would pick a, a situation, something that's meaningful, ideally something at first that's, that's, that's um probably doable a little bit scary but not terrifying something that's in your stretch zone but not your panic zone if you can <laughs> understand what i'm saying although sometimes you sometimes life makes you go into that zone true true but for example if there's a couple of things you're considering trying i would go for the for the place where you think you can get a quick small win like that you that you might be able to achieve success something that's going to be a stretch but not not that absolutely terrifies you. And then what I would say is I would apply the tools that I talk about in my book. We talked about conviction earlier before the break, the idea of having a sense of purpose. I think it's also critical to realize that there's no one size fits all way of performing whatever task you're talking about. You can find a way of customizing and tweaking how you perform or interact in a situation to make it feel just a little bit better for you. The analogy I like to use is like a tailor. Like when you go buy a dress or you go buy a pair of pants, like very few of us can sort of buy it off the rack and put it on. Although I have to tell you, my daughter always tells me, wait, dad, I can do that. And I'm like, <laughs> well, you're, you're lucky. You're lucky. You know, we, we always have to like, you know, tweak it here or there to personalize it and make it our own. And that's an analogy I think that's helpful to understand what you can do in situations. There are ways that you can sort of tweak a situation. So for example, uh, shy introverts might be very uncomfortable networking let's say, Mm -hmm. right? Making small talk with people they don't know, pitching and promoting themselves, walking into a networking event. Believe me, that terrifies me too. But are are there ways that you can tweak it? Like for example, if you go early at the beginning, it's going to be less noisy, less crowded, less intimidating. Maybe you can bring a buddy Maybe you have a friend who can be kind of your wingman, right? You don't necessarily have to cling to that person, but that person might be able to give you a little bit of courage. Maybe you could script out the first sentence or types of sentences you might use. Maybe you might go at a certain time of day that you know that you're going to be at your best. Are you a morning person? Are you an evening person? You know, there, maybe you bring a prop. Maybe there's something that you bring that kind of helps you, either giving you courage or it actually helps facilitate the conversation. Like there, there are a lot of things that you can do to try to kind of stack the deck in your favor in a particular situation. And I find that that's essential, critical for stepping outside your comfort zone gives you that little extra nudge. Nice. I like those tips. Now, one of the tips that I discovered for myself, because I really wanted to go out there and I want to, I live outside my comfort zone, Andy. I, I, I need to. That's where I feel comfortable now. Because the more we step out of our comfort, comfort zone, the less we need to step out of our comfort zone. Does that make sense? Well, Absolutely. You're expanding your comfort zone. Once my comfort zone expands, then it's no longer that fearful, I don't know. So I just want to like, do you rip the Band-Aid off real quick or do you take it off a little bit at a time? I'm a ripper. (laughs) I am going to rip it off. I don't care what the cost. I'm going to rip it off. So here's what helped me, Andy. When I went into these 
because I'm in marketing. Of all things, I had to step out of my comfort zone. And one of the things I noticed that worked for me as a shy extrovert was to ask the other person about themselves. Where are you from? You know, how long have you been here? Um, what do you do? And then all of a sudden, they start to diffuse that fearful feeling that I may be experiencing. How does that sound? That sounds great. I mean, I think that, that, that also you might be able to capitalize on a strength of yours, perhaps, which is that you're a good listener, for example, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that puts you in a position where you're capitalizing on your strengths. And then you can maybe sort of, sort of, um, sort of lean your way into an authentic conversation. So I like that. Well, you know, if you really care about the other person that you're with, then that would be authentic. And I was looking, listen, watching, reading, and now hearing you say, you know, authenticity, uh, likability, confidence, all these things that people are fearful of, even morality, those, those, those five things that you had mentioned earlier, that it, as long as it's authentic for me, that I'm willing to step out of it. But those moments that we need to step out that doesn't seem authentic, what's that push? Well, you know, I, I think there are ways to make it authentic, right? Okay. And then that, that's, what, that's, that's what I mean by sort of tweaking it like a tailor, as we talked about before. Like I, think it's, I think it's very hard to step. I, well, when you're stepping outside your comfort zone, something's going to be new by definition. So it's not going to feel totally authentic, right? You haven't brought it into yourself yet. You haven't put your own personal spin on it. It doesn't feel part of you, part of your repertoire, which is natural, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, by the way, I think it's important to understand that that's natural. And I also think it's important to understand you're not alone. That is something that a lot of people fear, right? So like a lot of people who worry about, you know, networking, let's say they walk into one of these networking events and they think to themselves, I am the only person in this room who's afraid, right? <laughs> and or everybody's is, looking at me and they right. don't even care. Nobody even it, knows you're there. It is so wrong. It is so wrong, you know, that, that understanding that not only like everyday people are afraid of the exact same situations that you are, yes. famous people are. I talk about a lot of famous people in my book. And the purpose of that mm. is to almost like demystify it. And, you know, like, like it's like, yeah, really, you're afraid of doing this? Well, so too is Hugh Grant and Emma yeah. Watson and, you know, I don't know if uh, I'm trying to think, uh, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates and all these like, you know, famous people, they also have fears too. Everyone does. And so I think it's really important to sort of understand that so that you don't start to be anxious about being anxious or afraid about being afraid, right? I love it. I love that because that is so true. When we think we're the only ones that are going through something, there's that disconnection with reality. Yeah, because exactly. That's not true. It's no. never true. No. Life is 1% fact and 99% whatever we want to make up, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so we're going to continue our conversation with Andy Malinsky when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. And keep in mind, 407-373-5959. Be the third caller or text around. I'm not checking my phone, so you keep doing it. We'll be right here waiting for you. I'm telling you, I do want to talk about another tactic that I've seen people do, but I'm not going to talk about it now. I'm going to talk about it on the air and see what your response is to that. Okay. But um, I, I'm, I'm telling you that many people approach um, getting outside their comfort zone um, so like everybody's looking like the spotlight is on them like the maestro that's going about to conduct the symphony and the reality is nobody even knows you're there yeah nobody even knows you're there and you i mean unless you're walking in naked or with a neon sign on your head people are probably just gonna you know just welcome you the way you are the unless, one that's course, carrying yeah go ahead i was just saying unless of course you're talking about public speaking where you know what you open your what you open the show with I, I gave my first TED talk a couple of months ago and people definitely know you're there I mean you're, <laughs> of course you're, walk, you're walking on stage right that's the whole point of public speaking right? <laughs> exactly. I've arrived like your yeah. GPS says in the morning you have arrived and right okay, yeah so exactly yeah, that's that's when you're when you're stepping out of your comfort zone when you feel that there's something that you're being called as a matter of fact my article for Florida Today I'm after the show I'm going to um the Florida Today studios 
that uh, we're going to talk about my next article that's called Be Who You Say You Are. So I write for the Florida Today. Uh, it's a local paper for the Space and Treasure Coast, just like the Orlando Sentinel is in Orlando, but um, um, the Florida Today is for here. It's a sister company of USA Today. And um, so the, the topic is Be Who You Say You Are. And I share a very painful time in my life, Andy, where not only did I have to um, step outside of my comfort zone, I had to act as if the people that were talking about me during this time, that they didn't matter. Hmm. So I started a Bible study. Gosh, this was back in 2002. And for two years, I mean, I mean, people came to this ministry and I was doing somebody else's work. You know, I was, it was something I bought and it had a format that I needed to follow. But out of 150 people, five of them wanted me to change the format. They also, because I grew up Catholic and nothing against the Catholic church, it's just basically these five people and their opinion that women should not be giving talks. Mm. So I took the scriptures and I turned it into like a witness, you know, like, you know, things that happened to me, this is how I dealt with it. And week after week, positive, positive, except those five. Mm. And I remember um, they, them going and I, I went to them and I said, hey, listen, why don't you start your own Bible study? Whoop. Here we go. Here we go. Last call. You can text Lillian McDermott or leave her a voicemail at 407-373-5959. Once again, here's Lillian. And welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn from one another. And today we are learning from our teacher, Andy Malinsky, PhD. So Dr. Andy Malinsky is the one that wrote the book, Reach. It's a new strategy to help you step outside your comfort zone, rise to the challenge, and build confidence. Are you ready for that? Will you consider stepping outside your comfort zone for just a little bit, just to see what's out there? And the reality is, according to Andy, by the time you go out there, you can come back and go, huh, that wasn't so bad. Right, Andy? <laughs> that wasn't so bad. That's what I find. Not not every time, but a lot of the time. Absolutely. Yeah. So we before we went on the break, I had shared a little bit of, you know, you said, well, maybe you're a good listener. Yes, I do listen very well. But there were times when I was still learning how to step outside my comfort zone. And I noticed this in people now. Instead of going and asking about the other person, they talk about themselves. And to me, that's a sign that someone's very nervous and doesn't know how to connect. What is a good tip for someone that is going to a situation where they're shy or maybe they are very much an extrovert, but all they wanna do is talk about themselves because they feel uncomfortable? Well, I, I think that they need to understand exactly what you said, the effect that that has on someone, because that ultimately is going to be what motivates them to 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 want to start to ask questions, right? Any any type of behavior basically is a function of motivation, wanting to do it, understanding why it's worth it, and then ability, your your capacity to do it. So they need to be motivated. They need to understand that this is important for them to be able to start to ask questions and not just speak about themselves. And then they have to be able to do it. That's the ability side. And that's, that's under appreciated, I think, right? To be able to ask questions, to be able to carry on a conversation, not mm -hmm. just ask a single question and then have like, <laughs> A big silence, right? Well, if the person you're talking to doesn't react, then it's time to move on. True. Well, no, that's true, right? It's a two. It, it, conversations are a two-way street, yeah. right? And there, there is there, the, you know, sort of chemistry is important. But I think there are some basics about listening, about asking questions, right? If you ask open-ended questions as opposed to closed-ended questions, yeah. right? A closed-ended question would be, you know, did you like your trip to Florida last week? Uh, yeah. <laughs> end of conversation an open-ended question might be like oh how was your trip 
And then you might say, oh, it was really cool. We went to Cape Canaveral. Oh, yeah, I've been there before. That starts to open up new conversational lines. So that's a skill, right? That's an example of a skill. So there's the motivation side and then the skill side. And I think together that sort of combines to, to helping someone step outside their comfort zone in that kind of situation. Very good. And we're talking with Andy Malinsky. And for those of you who want to learn more about stepping outside your comfort zone and getting some insider tips, you can go to andymalinsky.com or you can be the third caller or texter 407-373-5959 and get a copy of his book, Reach. Now, Andy, you know, as in your book, you have some myths. And I thought maybe we can quickly go through a few of them you know, your, some of your top myths about, you know, stepping outside of your comfort zone. Um, so let's talk about a few of those. What do you think? Sure. Um, which one would you like to start with? Whichever one. Let's start with number one, the, your number one myth. Okay. So my number one myth would be that, um, that, uh, all it takes to let's step out. Yeah. It's all it takes to step outside your comfort zone is taking a leap, for example, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Like, and I think leaps are, leaps are important, but I think, the, I think that if you look on the internet, for example, and you, you type in comfort zone, you'll see people taking leaps. You'll see fish leaping out of bowls. You'll see people leaping off cliffs. You'll see people leaping out of planes. And, and it kind of looks like it's kind of easier than it is. I think the reality is that uh, few people sort of spontaneously leap outside their comfort zone. You don't just say, if you're, you know, introverted, you don't just say, huh, I'm going to be extroverted today. I'm going to go <laughs> off and speak. Boom. And you're going <laughs> to leap off the cliff. Or if you're terrified of public speaking, you're not going to say, today, I'm going to go off and speak in front of 200 people. It just doesn't happen that way. But I think leaps are critical. They're important. But I think what's underestimated is the work that goes in to enabling yourself to actually take the leap, sort of the behind the scenes work. And that's, that's the myth that I wanted to sort of illustrate there. And I, I love that one because I remember going on my first hiking trip and, um, and I didn't even think about being on the top of the mountain. I thought of buying shoes. What are the best, <laughs> you know, so my first action plan and taking my first hiking trip was getting some hiking boots. That wasn't so difficult. And then you go, you take that next step. Many people think of that leap of flying off an airplane and crash landing on the ground, but that's not necessarily the first step, right? Exactly. Exactly. And I think that I think a lot of people, I think there are misconceptions about stepping outside comfort zones. And that's, that's why I wanted to sort of organize it at the end of the book in terms of myths. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you another one that pops into yeah. my mind. I'm sorry, because no, I, I just didn't have them in my mind before, but now they're, they're sort of popping back in. Good. Another one is um, like that I'm, another myth is I'm the only one who struggles with situations outside my mm. comfort zone, right? And, and the, the reality is that nearly Everyone does, um, but but people don't always talk about it, right? It's kind of a that's a vulnerable thing to admit that you step out that that it's hard for you to step outside your comfort zone, right? So I think that's another that's another important myth. Um, and then I'll, I'll tell you another one. Sure. Uh, another 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 one is that is that the magic only happens outside your comfort zone. I think that's that's um that's important to note, and we sort of alluded to it earlier, yeah. but. You know, I don't want everyone to come away from this show saying, I got to step outside my comfort zone in every possible situation. Because I think that that's, that's misguided. Um, I think that ultimately it's probably a recipe for failure in you, a way. You think, you really think that? Because, you know, I think that if we are constantly stepping outside of our comfort zone, we will learn a new truth about what we didn't know before. And it doesn't have to be jumping out of a plane. It could just be talking to your neighbor. It could be True. driving over a bridge. True, absolutely. And I, what I want to say is that I think that I think you there there are many situations in life where your life can be improved and enriched by learning to step outside your comfort zone. But learning to step outside your comfort zone is a skill. It's like building a muscle. If you're if you're a couch mm -hmm. potato and you want to go run a 10k, don't get off the couch and try to run a 10k right away. Although I do know someone who did that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
you know, what you probably want to do is run around the block. And then the next, <laughs> day, the next day, run around the block again. And the next day, try to run one mile. And then the next, you know what I mean? You want to build up to it, build that muscle. And so that's kind of what I mean. You want to pick your spots, have early wins, build your confidence, build your resilience, and then start for great, start to look for more and more challenges. That, that's what I mean. Okay. So let's build the muscle of self-esteem though, because yeah. a lot of fear because if you're looking at, you know, confident or um, will I be liked? Am I being authentic? Maybe they don't know themselves. Can we talk a little bit about self-esteem and building that muscle? Absolutely. And I think that goes hand in hand with confidence, right? Your self-esteem, your, 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 your sort of positive regard for yourself. And I think that the more that you avoid situations that you really care about, right? Situations that you really know could enrich your life. And the more that you avoid those, I think that does have a hit to your self-esteem. So I think that alongside confidence, you're going to start to feel more self-esteem, especially when you can get those early wins. And I really mean that, right? Mm -hmm. I think you want to approach this just like you would approach that couch to 10k type of thing. <laughs> like like training for anything don't don't choose the hardest possible situation <laughs> right because 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 that's that's a, i think it's a recipe for failure because it's 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 i think you might feel discouraged you might feel that hit to your self-esteem especially if it's vulnerable and you might not do it again choose choose like a low-hanging fruit <laughs> choose some small wins build up that muscle build up that self-esteem then go for even harder situations and you'll see that your life is going to be transformed fairly quickly well, I think those are very good, wise words for the famous and the wise and all of us who are listening to you today. Thank you, Andy, for coming on the Low McDermott Radio Show and sharing such a positive message that we can do it. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. And to you, my listening friend, I believe out of your comfort zone is a new comfort zone. So let's continue to grow together. And remember, I'll be right here waiting for you worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. This is Lillian McDermott wishing you love, peace, joy, and unexpected abundance. Make it the best day ever. Okay, Mike's off. Okay, thank you so much, Andy. That was great. This is a great conversation. I'm going to turn oh. off. Go ahead. No, I was going to say I really enjoyed it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. I just remembered that you wanted me to say ever. I just <laughs> I forgot about that. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> hey, it's part of life. I'm comfortable <laughs> with that. <laughs> okay, let me end the, the recording right now.